Another look at the scoreboard from tonight's game one in the second round between the Toronto Raptors and Philadelphia 76ers. Who you don't see, Jimmy Butler. He was 4 for 12 from the field, did have five assists, finished with 10 points. Here he is. Jimmy, how did you feel like they were able to break up their offense or kind of slow down? Such a sense that you guys were once they got in bed defense. Um, I think uh, they're a tough team to, to go up against when our defense is set. We talked about it. Um, I think all in all, we turned the ball over, so they got out in transition. And then uh, whenever we take the ball out the net, they're set. You know, um, We talked about what we're going to do. I don't think we did a, a good job of, of doing what we said we were going to do before the game. This is the first time we've seen this team now with Marcus Saul. How has he felt like they've changed now with him? And what do you want to do with him? Uh, I mean, um, he's a really good player. they got a lot of them. I think we just got to really stick to what we said we were going to do. Like I said, um, he's, he's tough. He can shoot it. He can pass it, put the ball on the floor. But um, we, we just got to be more aggressive with with everybody on a defensive end. Jimmy, you, you talked about being aggressive. It seemed like you guys didn't go to the basket enough and settled too many jokes. Would that be a fair statement? Uh, you take what the game gives you a lot of the times. Um, you know, they're, they're a team that rotates very heavily. We just missed some shots. That's okay. Um, I think we're all fine with taking those exact same shots next game. You guys, uh, obviously, it's a different opponent. Pascal Siakam, 22 points in the first half. New playoff career high for a half for him. Or, or now. <laughs> Maintenant. Okay. <laughs> Pascal Matthew Cullen de Radio Canada, qu'est-ce que ça vous a fait? Comment est-ce que ça a changé le jeu? Le, la bloc de Kawhi Leonard, puis votre dunk, puis les trois points de Danny Green, uh, la prochaine pos position. Uh, qu'est-ce que comment est-ce que ça a changé le jeu? Alors, je pense que uh, ça apporte l'énergie, bien sûr, en, uh, en défense et uh, essayer de, 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 de jouer comme l'a fait là avec des 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 de, um, de stats de, de, décisives que que Kawhi a fait. Um, Danny et, et tout le monde. Donc, je pense que collectivement, c'était euh, très bien. On a, on a, on a eu de, 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 de bonnes séquences en défense et, et on, on espère continuer comme ça. Mike, on the left, halfway back. Pascal, uh, Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Uh, what was it like between you and Kawhi in that first quarter? I think you each went seven and nine, each had 17 points. Um, Were you aware that each of you were kind of just rolling that way? Was there any interaction between the two of you? Um, I, I saw what Kawhi was doing. Um, I mean, it was unbelievable. And um, just getting to spots, uh, making shots, driving. Um, I don't know. I kind of, I wasn't, I wasn't really, like, looking at myself. Like, I, I saw what Kawhi did. I don't know if, you know, if you saw what I did, too. That's great. But all I did? <laughs> no, I mean it was it was good. Like we had, you know, early, um, a lot of pace and and try to you know play in transition and and um, and and kind of take whatever the defense gives me. And and obviously if Kawhi you know is going off too, you know he's gonna get you know some attention and um, kind of open up the floor for me too. So. Any other questions in English, please, Josh, down front. How do you know it's in English? I uh, just guessed. <laughs> Josh Lindbergh, TSN. P Pascal, for game one, how, how much of it as a team and individually for you is about feeling out the other team? I'm being subtle to think. Or how they're covering you? Yeah, for sure, because we know, you know, it's a long series. There's going to be a lot of changes and, and things, for, you know, teams going to make adjustments. And um, I think, you know, it's coming out just kind of staying true to who you are as, as a team and um, trying to execute. And, and obviously, we know things are going to, you know, there's going to be some changes and, and all that. But I think if we, you know, stay within within what we do and, and as a team and um, continue to build on that and, and kind of adjust, you know, whatever comes at us. Steven? Pascal? Uh, prior to the game, coaches were talking about how transition gets tougher to accomplish in the postseason. Just wondering, have you noticed it getting harder to run the floor and be successful at that aspect of your game through the playoffs? Uh, for us? Uh, for me? Um, um, I mean, I, I think I did a decent job, you know, running the floor and um, kind of kind of trying to, to keep that pace. Um, it was kind of, in the beginning of the game, it was kind of uh, weird a little bit. We didn't, we didn't, um, 
we didn't come out as fast as we usually do, but I think we picked it up, and um, and we were, we was pretty um, consistent with with with, with, with the pace and playing fast because you know that's how we want to we want to go up and down, and um, and and for me, I think you know I think I did a decent job. I mean, it was maybe a couple of possession out there. I was a little tired, but for most part, I was good. Back to Matthew in French, and then we'll wrap up. Encore une en en français à Pascal ici. Vous, vous travaillez très bien avec Kawhi Leonard, ça c'est sûr. Est-ce que vous avez vu Kawhi à le, au niveau qu'on a vu ce soir? Euh, je pense que pour, pour moi, c'est la, la première fois de le voir pendant les playoffs avec ce qu'il a fait aujourd'hui. Mais c'est vraiment impressionnant et, et, et pour, pour nous, pour moi en plus, c'est juste de regarder ça et être avoir la chance d'être là et pour pour voir ça c'est 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 vraiment 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 euh, impressionnant. Um, Mike last one. Uh, Mike Lavier l'Express. Uh, tu as dominé Tobias Harris ce soir des deux côtés du terrain. Uh, pour le prochain match, que penses-tu que tu peux faire de plus face à lui? Face à qui? Tobias Harris. Um, ouais, je pense que um, on était pas mal. Um, en tant que en tant qu'équipe et, et je pense qu'on a, on a essayé de parce qu'en fait quand tu arrives à ce niveau là c'est beaucoup de joueurs sont très talentueux et, et ça, ça ne prend pas qu'une personne en fait donc ça prend euh, un effort collectif et, et je pense qu'on a fait ce soir et, et, et on espère continuer comme ça on sait que le prochain match ils vont venir avec plus d'intensité et, et, et essayer de, 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 de faire des choses de manière un peu différente mais bon pour nous c'est c'est continuer euh, avec la, la, la même intensité, continuer à, à être euh, focus et, 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 et uh, kind of like, oh, I want to say English a little bit, but sorry. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Pascal. My bad, bro. Time for zero quick, you by Gatorade Zero, and how about zero shot attempts on Kawhi Leonard? Not on my watch. With the block that Pascal Siakam, that's what we call a symbiotic relationship. Ooh, what a big word, big word. Where you pull that from? Yeah, that's that UNC degree. Man, that was tight. Do it again. Symbiotic, you know? Yeah, they go, they go together. Come on, that's what happens there. But those two, I mean, they were incredible in this game. In the first quarter, they were 14 from 18 combined from the field in the first quarter. Well, it reminds me of last year against Sixers and against Boston, what Tatum and Brown did to them. Those guys scored points, and, the, and that tell you Sixers didn't have length. These two guys were incredible, and I, I don't know if Philadelphia has an answer for them going forward because they just don't have the size. Yeah, I thought they did a remarkable job of just imposing their will and having that sense of urgency from the beginning, yeah. the tip. Like you, you, you usually don't see Kawhi Leonard come out and take eight to nine shots in the first quarter, like this being super aggressive. And you don't see Siakam. Look, he was really searching for his opportunities. And they came at a, you know, in, in spots because he was getting so much space and he took a full advantage of it. You know, we were talking during the break about Kyle Lowry. And remember, he was the star of Toronto yes. for years. And now you love to see a guy like this who's an older player understand, I'm just going to do my role, be the point guard. I don't have to take shots, rely on these other guys. A lot of guys, as they get older, don't do that. They get frustrated because, hey, this is my city, but he's developed into a guy as a point guard and let these other guys shine, which is kind of nice. And the thing you want to look for in your point guard is just turnover ratio. Kyle Lowry, eight assists, just one turnover, only took 10 shots, scored nine points. So he didn't shoot it well, but like you said, he still contributed. And if Siakam's going to pick up the scoring load and Kawhi Leonard's going to do that as well, you don't really need Lowry to be a dominant scorer. But what would that have resulted to in years of the past? If Kyle Lowry don't shoot the ball well, you, you, lose. You, you lose. But now, being a third, fourth option, and now you're the general, and you kind of just facilitate, put everybody in position. Now everything that you get, you know, you, that's the cushion. You're playing with house money. And for the Raptors, you, you look at their record, you know, you know that was hovering over them after that game one <laughs> loss to the <laughs> Orlando <laughs> Magic yeah. in the last series at home. And one and eight in playoff history in game ones at home. I mean, that's a terrible mark. To get this, you kind of get that monkey off your back a little you bit, You right? do, but now Philadelphia has that monkey still on their back because they're, <laughs> they've lost 13 in a row in Toronto. So you knew one of them was going to break tonight, and now Philadelphia, 
that that's going to hang on to Toronto. I think they feel really good. The fans finally leave the building and say, we won game one. The players, will, we won game one. Because if they'd have lost that first game, that's what everybody was talking about. We're up in that game. count to 14 now, by the way. Oh, 14. Yeah, four, four, 14. 14. But I, I really do think it's going to come back to what GA touched on, which is the adjustments. And I said, who's the biggest swinger or who's the biggest player in, in this series? And he said, you know what? It's not the players, it's the coaches. It's going to come down to Nurse, Brett Brown, who make what necessary adjustment to put the guys in the best situation. And Joel and B said it in his post game. Look, we have to make some adjustments, and it's going to come down to the coach. Well, that, that's a great point because when you look at the Philadelphia 76ers and you hear something very subtle from Joel Embiid like that, you think, well, do those players respect and have confidence in their head coach? Where if you look at Nick Nurse and how the Raptors are reacting to their head coach, you think there's more respect for Nick Nurse in Toronto than there is Brett Brown in Philadelphia? Well, good. Well, I, I think what happens is tomorrow, that first meeting, mm. that's where the coaches, you got to give them something to give them hope if you're the Sixers. So you got to figure, this is what we're going to do. Maybe one or two things that's going to change it in our advantage. Nick Nurse now has got to go in and say, okay, we won, but if we got to clean these two, three things up because it's still a seven-game series. So he can't sit back and relax, okay, we did everything great. He's got to also come with something different. Larry Brown, I worked for him, he always would put a new play in or something so the players in their mind say, okay, this is the difference going to help us win that next game. I think anybody that, you know, that's watching the game understand that if you have any type of basketball knowledge, what is the major adjustment that you throw at Toronto? Kawhi Leonard just had 45 yeah. points. So it's not going to be that easy for him just to navigate around. They're going to throw some things at him. So if you're Coach Nurse, you have to adjust and prepare for that. Okay, if they blitz, all right, we're going to have somebody high where you have an outlet pass. You're going to put Paul Gasol, I mean, Marcus Gasol in the middle of uh, the, the eye so he's able to facilitate and exercise his right as one of the best passing big mans in the history of this game to, you know, facilitate. So, like, those adjustments, but if you're Brett Brown, you have to throw double teams at Kawhi Leonard in all facets because the players want that. Joel, Joel Embiid said that uh, specifically, like, look, we got to double. Well, sometimes I just feel like you understand how this program is developing because guess who we're going to hear from now? Who? Marcus Gasol. Guy you just mentioned. Man, look at that. Come on, man. Um, obviously, it's uh, something that that we must do. Um, be really engaged defensively. Um, you know, against a, a very talented team, you have to. There's no other way for us um, to win. And I thought that we did a you know pretty good job for um, stretches. I think at, at times too we got kind of lost and, uh, and miscommunicated a lot of uh, actions. Um, you know, we got to also do a better job rebounding um, when we get them to miss and uh, you know, a little more mindful um, of, of what they're trying to accomplish and, and how they're trying to accomplish and mindful of the ball as well and the timing and score. But obviously when you have Kawhi and, and, and Pascal playing at that level offensively, you know, um, covers up for a lot of the you know, little mistakes that we had. Um, but now watch film, we get ready for game two. Mark, uh, the last time I've seen Kawhi play that well in the playoffs a few years ago against the Grizzlies. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> nice to have him on your side in a game like this. Well, it's nice that it, now he's not knocked his career high against us. I mean, that team against the Grizzlies. Now you know he's against somebody else, and I'm on his uh, on his side. Um, I like when he's assertive. I like when he goes, you know, north south. Um, okay. Yeah. What do you think has been the biggest difference for him in the postseason? It does look like maybe he's folded into another gear in the last couple of weeks. He's having that gear. Uh, you know, we're going to put the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, we're going to create gaps and spacing, um, set good screens for him, and, uh, and, and you know, he's a guy that uh, is able to make those plays and a uh, you know, heck of a player. You must be running out of nice things to say about the high scout. It seems like the, further, the, the longer the season goes, the further you go, the better he gets. Yeah, I mean, he's a um, really good poised. Um, you know, you have to do a good job early on in the game, getting good shots. I think that, that kind of uh, allows him you know, to take it to uh, to that level and, and get confident, get going, and get in a rhythm. Um, so it's you know, a matter of uh, kind of Kyle and myself uh, with first unit to get, you know, 
Pascal, those uh, good shots at the basket. Um, it, it's either a face up or back down or, you know, off the rip, uh, getting good looks. They got within four uh, early third quarter when JJ had had all those threes. What's being said in the timeout at that point? Is there anything you guys are specifically trying to remind yourselves about? Or is it just very calm? Just be more, more mindful. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the, the place I was talking about. Um, um, just now, um, be more mindful of, you know, what they're trying to accomplish with yeah. plays and, and time and score and, and those sort of things. So, um, I think we did a pretty good job, though, of uh, solving that issue and uh, and finishing possession with rebounds um, after that. Um, I think they had 14 or 16 second chance points. Uh, when I looked up, um, you know, we got to cut those down. Different scenario. I, I, you know, now I'm, I'm on the other side. I'm not comparing, you know, that game when I'm trying to beat him on this game. That I'm trying to help him. It's, it's impossible to compare. Mark, you guys had uh, neutralized him pretty well. Um, how much you feel about that? Uh, um, it's, it's game one. Uh, you know, you're trying to make it it's kind of the same thing over and over again. Um, I don't like repeating myself much. It's, you just stay, try to stay in front of them, be physical, contest your shots, box out. It's pretty, uh, it's hard. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he'll, he'll try. I think he, you know, it's hard um, with some of the guards, you got to be up higher. Um, because they, they, you know, especially with JJ as a, as a big, you got to be high, high and helping the guard coming over. He does a good job of coming with that ball, especially on the left hand, and and uh, he's, a, he's a really good player. Kawhi Leonard's post game interview was just one question, but we're hoping to hear more from him next on Game Time Live.